Hello everyone, greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on UFT. This is Nirsh Kumar Singh and you are watching UFT tutorial series. Today we have picked up another topic on UFT which is called as the object identification and generally the object identification is a topic in UFT which allows you to identify an object which is typically not identified. The reason is why you want to identify is all about maybe the object is not listed in the object repository and without having an object in the repository you cannot write a script on that or even if you land up creating a script by just having a good knowledge of object properties and the syntax used in the VB script, it may lead to uh, execution failure. The reason is uh, as you execute it, of course, it won't get any necessary properties, what it would need to identify the object on the application. So today we'll be trying to understand the same thing and uh, get a clarity on what exactly uh, the uh, object identification ways are and how and what could be the reason, the possible reasons uh, the object may not be identified. So let me just take you directly uh, working on the window and uh, with help of a test, let me make you understand what exactly it is. So here we are on a new test in UFT and we are having a settings here to understand. So generally when it comes to tool, you see some of the options uh, like object spy, object identify, uh, identification, and many other things. So we'll be looking each one of them one after the other. Uh, we'll come back to object spy a little bit later when we come to understanding of descriptive programming, which will help you to understand object spy in more detailed way. So uh, this is object identification, which will let you understand about the identification concept. So all you have to do is come to the tools and click on the object identification. Uh, generally, what happens so say for example, uh, we talk about uh, the objects uh, listed by the developer in the application and may not have defined all the necessary properties for the time being in the previous version. So being the initial point of time, the developer would may define only the limited properties which are associated with the application and uh, those properties may not help you to identify the object and put it in the repository. So it sometimes becomes a difficult challenge for the uh, testers to write a script, interact with the object, and execute the line of script on that. So now when it comes to object identification, it allows you to filter the properties and create certain list of uh, properties which can help you to identify the object. So generally we have three different levels to identify an object. By default, the very first thing which comes under picture is program mandatory properties and assistive properties. So when it comes to mandatory and assistive properties, these are some of the basic things about any object which are mandatorily defined by the developer. So say for example, if I'm talking about a different concept, let's come to the application, what we are interested in. So you can filter the environment by dropping down from here and pick up what type of application you're working. And based on that, you can see the objects and their properties listed. So say, for example, WPF button, we, these are the mandatory properties and WPF uh, menu, WPF object. So let's take WPF button into consideration. And for WPF button, these are the things which are defined by the add-in. So generally, this is where we can relate back the selection of add-in when it comes to selecting certain add-in during the launch of the UFT. But uh, this is where it is important. So uh, some of the properties are automatically picked up. That text is something which is mandatory without which an object cannot be defined. The dev name of the object, or say generally we in ordinary application, we call it as the name of the object, which is one of the mandatory property without which an application cannot be listed or an object cannot be listed on the screen. If in case the mandatory properties fail to identify an object or say these properties are not unique on the application, may conflict with another one, then it will switch to, UFT will switch to assistive properties, which will be another set of property values which will allow to identify the object on the screen. Now, in case you think that your mandatory properties are not the one which your developer are defining, you can add or remove by clicking on add and remove and deselect or select the necessary properties which the developer is generally defining as the mandatory properties.
So it's up to you what you want to decide and go ahead in case the mandatory one defined by the add-ins fail. So you can really go ahead and add and remove the properties as per your need. And similarly, does can happen for assistive properties. But now, say for example, you say, why should we go to assistive properties? Why don't we add the assistive property directly in mandatory and it has not to pass the uh, assistive properties or mandatory properties at all? So generally, of course, why not? We can add all the necessary properties of uh, the object in the mandatory properties itself, but your execution will be hampered. Now, when it comes to execution, of course, all the mandatory properties will be scanned or looked for in an application. So generally, to avoid those execution delays or, uh, in, you know, the time taken for executing automation tests, where we say that automation is time-saving process, we do not add all the properties in the mandatory list. So we only keep it limited and we create different levels of the object to be identified. So generally, one is the mandatory properties. If your mandatory property fails, then you list certain assistive properties which will identify the object. Say in case... Uh, your mandatory and assistive both fails, then you can go with enable a smart identification where smart identification will allow you to further filter the properties and see if mandatory and assistive have failed, then a smart identification will help you to identify the property. And here we have got two different sets of properties again, which are called as base filter properties and optional filter properties. Again, we have got certain list of properties which you can select as a part of it. And based on that, it can be uh, utilized to identify the object. So you can decide on uh, what all you have included as a part of mandatory properties, assistive properties, then you can go for base filter properties and you can list some of the properties here which will be beyond the normal level of identifying the application object. Then in case if the base filter properties are failed again to identify the object, then optional filter properties will try to identify. So generally, it is the four different levels by which you try to identify an object. In case one or the other fails, then the last will obviously identify that. But what if, imagine that it is a stub or driver, and uh, these do not have any property which can be listed, or it is just a static object which can let you to the next page. So generally it comes when it comes to the dummy modules and so on. Then we make use of the last level, which is called as ordin ordinal identifier. So in terms of ad ordinal identifier, we have two different ways to identify an object. One is by indexing it, by finding out the index number and the sequence of the object on the screen and following the index, which is generally the most unique thing which will be defined by the developer on the screen of an application. So that is one way. And second is finally a relative path, which is called as location, which will help you to identify the object again. So in case there is an already identified object on the right of this object, which is not identified, then you can create a relative path or say like you can create a location stating that left of this object, down of this object, or top of this object, or right of this object by giving the location of that. So generally, if you enable this, then only you can allow, uh, it can allow you to identify the object based on the ordinal identifiers. So these are the three different levels or three different stages by which we predict that the object can be identified. Beyond that, of course, you can filter in more details and have your own set of properties which can be listed at each level or each stage of object identification. So that's all from here, team. I hope you have understood the concept of object identification. In case you fail doing that, I have a comment box below. You are free to comment it so that I can get back to you with more details on the same. So till then, keep learning, keep exploring, and keep practicing. So in case you are not subscribed to the channel, please do hit subscribe right there. And uh, feel free to reach me for any clarification. Thanks for watching the video, team. Take care. Happy learning.